David. I just welcomed everybody to the May meeting, so I'll welcome you again. Uh, we have two applications, both that are sort of uh, complicated. So we'll do the best we can do. I want to finish up no later than 930. So we'll cut if we don't get to the end of the first one, we'll probably cut you off about 815 or so. So the first applicant, oh, let me just say, uh, for everybody who's here, um, A, sign in, and B, if you wish to be what's known as an interested party under the law of the state of Vermont, which gives you the right to appeal any decision that we may or may not make, um, you need to either speak one way or the other on an application or submit written evidence that would make you qualify to be a interested party. So the first uh, meeting on the agenda is SUB 2023-05 Buttermilk LLC. Uh, Buttermilk LLC is seeking a subdivision approval for their plan unit development located at 74 Jolita Court. They're presenting a master plan of the proposed development and also seeking to formalize a phase development for the remainder of the project. The applicants are proposing final plans for construction of building two of the plan unit development. So three of you gonna probably speak. Yes. Let me swear you in. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. Why don't you introduce yourselves and tell us what you got in mind. Uh, I'm Brendan O'Reilly. I am. Uh, We've seen you before, Brendan. <laughs> yes. Uh, we were the original, uh, call it, uh, reclaimers of the old creamery site and received a state grant to take down the old creamery and come up with a development which we've been pecking away at here. Um, a lot of the questions from this town or the DRB and select board has been what's our master plan? which as a builder developer, it's always hard to get the master plan based on the market. And uh, so it's still evolving, but we're focused on the, the general concept of our master plan, which won't likely change because of uh, acreage and restrictions and focused on building two's approval, which we had gotten prior approval just post building one. I think if you remember, David, it was, back, I don't know, four or five, five years ago now, at least. Four, <laughs> yeah. So pandemic hit, we didn't build building two. Um, it increased by you know, 600 or so square feet. Uh, and that's plans and elevations and details that are submitted in the packet. The, <clears throat> the general site is covered under a lot of different requirements on a master plan PUD by the town of Richmond that we've been going through with, well, Ravi years ago, and then I think there was an interim administrator, and now Tyler. Kayla was a young woman who was uh, in there for like a couple months yeah. after, well, after he left. Been a, been a long process. Um, some of the others involved in the creamery felt like a, getting approval on the master plan would be more cohesive and and a better lineal approach. So that's where we're at. John Brenner, he can introduce himself in a sec, but uh, he did all the civil work, which was a large portion of this and Bud's the architect. Great. Right. John Grenier from Grenier Engineering, civil engineer. Uh, Bud Wilson, Wilson Architects. I was the architect on the first building as well. Okay. So you're here for the master plan, but also for the approval of the second building. Yes. And so in that, in the knowledge of that, it's a big plan where I doubt we'll get through <laughs> the whole thing tonight at all. Um, but to the goal was to get feedback, um, address any concerns, try and attack any of the stronger bullet points of uh, that we'd need to get through for approval. 
and continue probably to the next meeting. If, okay. If Have you had a chance to review the staff notes? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we removed them. We talked with Tyler on through most all of them and discussed them. Uh, are ready to address them either piece by piece or however you guys would propose the best. Yeah, why uh, don't you why don't you just start down staff notes? Okay. And John, do you want to give it like an overall? Yeah. Can, do, you, do you have the ability to share like the yep. 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 Hang on there. Sure. One quick overview of the layout would probably help kind of orient people to where we are. So this is the revision that we had kind of made to this. So this is the overall. If you want some of the other stuff, I have that as well. I think this is just a really great place to start. Um, you know, on the upper left of the plan is the intersection of Bridge Street and Jolina Court. Uh, building number one is shown with, you know, a white building as existing building with just a black outline. <clears throat> and right now you drive in. Um, Right now you drive in past building one and you come to a large gravel parking lot with um, a solar canopy. And that solar canopy is shown as that rectangle with the uh, cross hatching in it. It has, says 28 spaces in the middle of it. So right there is the existing solar canopy and then just a kind of a semi roughed in parking lot under and around it. So our plan is to more formalize that parking and build a building number two, which is a uh, walkout type building. You'll drive in, park and enter the first floor, and then there'll be floors above, which you'll see eventually on the uh, site renderings and you know architectural plans. And then you can also go downstairs and walk out the basement level, which brings you to that lower parking lot where we show 15 parking spaces and maybe a future uh, solar canopy and some more parking for a possible future building below, <laughs> which is just off the edge of the page. Um, as Brendan said, building two, three and building four are conceptual. We understand that we'll have to come back to the DRB when those buildings are formalized in terms of square footage and their appearance and um, specific sewer and water hookups. But for now, we're showing them as blocks as to where they will probably be and a mock-up of what parking around them could look like so that there's an actual cohesive plan. It's not just build building two and then jam in building three or four wherever they fit. Like we're trying to think ahead. And, you know, knowing those shapes and, and uses may change in the future. So what we really focused on is the construction and the layout of building number two. So you can drive into the first floor, get out of your car and walk in, or you can take the loop road around the building, some parking on the side, and then park below and walk in the basement level. Um, all of these buildings have been, these, this building has been, you know, graded out. Uh, we have the sewer and the water connections all figured out, drainage around them. Um, our stormwater discharge design, we haven't applied for the permit yet, but our design is for the master build out so that we have enough capacity. We know we have capacity if we build this whole thing as designed. Uh, we didn't want to design the stormwater collection for just building number two, start to try to build three and four someday in the future, and then realize we didn't have enough storage. So that part has been thought out for the entire master plan. The rest of it is really concentrating on how we will build, connect, and get access to building number two. Um, I think that's a good general overview of what, you know, what we're thinking. There's a parking table in the corner showing you, based on the uses, what we need for parking. We exceed the parking required. Um, you know, with a little extra, so should building three or four of the uses change we have some flexibility in how we'll allocate the parking but you know for now in the near future when we build building two we have plenty of parking both on the upper level and lower level good fire access to the building we have a fire lane on the both sides of the building showing where the truck can pull up and you know hopefully never have to but can fight a fire um, one of the requirements of the pud is uh, show loading zones if they're going to be commercial uses, like where can a truck park and use their hand dolly to unload um, either retail items or just uh, um, you know, access parts of the building. We've shown a bunch of those. Uh, so a truck can park, pull off to the side. We still have good adequate circulation around those driving and parking areas. Um, 
we have adequate uh, handicapped parking spots near the front doors and also at the lower level if needed. Um, I guess I'll leave it at that unless there's any specific question or something that is confusing from the plan. Anybody on the board have questions at this point? No. Yeah. They said uh, for the on the front of the building, talking about drive-in parking. Is that just meaning parking at the first floor level? Yeah. Pull up okay. to the curb, get out, walk up on the sidewalk, and then there's multiple front accesses to access different units on that first floor. And yeah, there's also the parking in the back is is one level down. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And the elevator is right in the middle. So that access is all level. Yeah, the loop road, the the loop the loop road Patrick drops ten feet from it. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's basically the old cellar hall was there from the whole creamery. So the grade just okay. should we go then through or just Tyler like we just Go to each section of the. Uh, sure. Why don't you address Tyler's comments? Um, yeah, I do have a summary section in the back that has kind of all the other ones. There's also more specific ones tied to the regulations that are in black in the middle of the regulations. So I tried to kind of give you guys some idea of there are a few things in there that I wasn't able to put on the list. But as a general rule, those are all things that I was able to kind of note as outstanding. And there's some duplication if you actually read the text of the notes there's a few things that are like they pop up twice so i i note that on there but as usual what i try to do is to take the regulations and kind of take what they've submitted and see does this does this match up and i provided comments accordingly do you think do we think it works for them to then focus on the uh... But you know, the heading items for DRB consideration as opposed to scrolling through. I mean, you you can. I mean, you could scroll through. There's some other stuff that's in there. But again, but if you kind of want to get if, there's anything if it's a if it's a time thing, like I said, these are kind of more the the big items that kind of jumped out at me. That sounds good to me. Yeah. Why, do, why, yeah. why don't we do that? All right. So that's all the way in the back for, oh, yeah, for those twenty of the long. that yep. note. <laughs> This is a mixed use building. Your first floor is going to be commercial and the upper floor is a uh, the, uh, the first floor is uh, basically all business occupancy for now. There's a gym on this far end here, which goes two levels. It's connected both levels by a stair in the gym. Up, up above on the second and third floors are apartments. And down in the lower level, there are apartments, garden apartments to grade, uh, storage for the tenants, and uh, the mechanicals and the sprinkler ropes. So storage, what do you have in mind for storage? I mean, what, what are similar the issues I've seen? Similar to the first building we do, we have individual lockout Good. down there. Yeah, there's we used to put snow tires and for everything, skis yeah, yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Good. And then we've kind of considered what was needed over on building one as far as determining how big they needed to be. So the majority of the uphill side of the building on that level is uh, the gym on this end where it daylights and then all the storage requirements, uh, showers for the gym, and then a small laundry for the tenants on this far end. And you envision the gym being public gym or just for the building occupants? It was public. Yeah, it will be public. I mean, apparently there was a lot of people in building one who was wishing there was an exercise area or a public right. area. And that's how this came about. Interesting. We designed a bike rack inside the building for building one <clears throat> and then doing a bigger version for building two. And it, would it make sense to bring up building two and scroll back and forth or, or show them the elevations? Or sure, I can do the that. renderings of yeah, building two, maybe. Yeah, makes just sense. So yeah, that's see, that's 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 it describes that. what's happening with Greg. The renderings. Hang on one second. Here, here, I just gotta get to time. And well, I was pulling that up. Like, it's a general question. If you know, if zoning allowed, it would be your preference to do all residential. 
Uh, I just, I guess I asked only out of curiosity. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As a building and like overall site, no, because the vibrancy also comes from the mixed. Yeah. 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 Like it's just, it's like the whole battle with, with town maintaining coffee shops. Do you want and, the uh, elevation and, you know, and the wine bars? And uh, I would show the rendering for now, Tyler. Sure. I think that Please. is right there. Yeah. Here, hold on a second. I just got to go back to sharing. So people at home can see it. And David, can you see? Can you see what I'm sharing? Okay. The top, the top renderings as you come around the corner from building one. That's the elevation and the look of building two. It's a blue gray material. What will um, the material be? On the same siding, basically, it's building one, that same metal siding. Right. But mixed up a little bit differently, but it's still, it, it's there's variation. You can see there's this big, I apologize when this got transferred from the rendering uh, to a print, it lost a lot of the sharpness. Yeah. What are so the structures on the very roof on the top? Well, originally, uh, we were looking for a way to to kind of get away from that total rectilinear look and maybe give it a little accent on the ends and also to possibly use those as a uh, mechanical screen inside for equipment if needed. Uh, I guess it's a cost factor, so I think the developer would just as soon maybe get eliminate them or not. It's so up, it, you know. It's come in conflict with some of the solar and the angles needed for the solar. Part of the, part of the goal, like building one, is, is it overproduces solar with the solar canopy now. Yes, it doesn't overproduce solar. Overproduces electric. Right, <laughs> but it um, and so the goal is to keep it in near net zero. The only thing that is fossil fuel in building one is the use for hot water for residential hot water use because there's natural gas on the street so same the same philosophy and approach for the mechanicals is for building two more or less a 100 percent electric building with with natural gas for the residential uses for for hot water um everything uh, else is is Electric, like stoves and uh, stoves are electric. Tires. The mechanical system, which is the heating and cooling, mini splits are all right. electric. Um, obviously, the lighting. I think that, that's more or less it. Um, uh, yes, another thing, as far as the tie in from this building to the first building, obviously, you live in Richmond, so you, you're aware of the scale of building number one. We on this building, we went to a different floor system on, on the first building. Uh, we dropped the ceiling below the floor system to allow for duct work and stuff. On this building, it's an open web joist. So all the mechanicals are running in the floor. So in essence, we dropped the height about three feet. So this, this building is actually on this side, three feet lower than what you see at the same elevation as uh, building one. No, really? Okay. But to finish and answer your question, David, yeah, I, I'm whether sorry. those, no, I'm sorry. <clears throat> whether the architectural features stay up on the top for that roof or they'd have to change for the orientation for the solar. And then part and parcel is it was the concept and going with the discussion and seeing how it, how it plays out. You can see it plays less of a role from the cemetery view on the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, which is kind of that's nice, but um, the center one though, but I thought was for that's the elevator. That's the elevator that yeah. asked us that. Yeah. So is on the bottom? Is that what we would see from, let's say? Uh, I think if you could see it walking up. Yeah, I up past the library there. and look over from the cemetery. If you came up the farm road, we didn't yeah. do a rendering from that actually, because like you can do a rendering from the sidewalk and take a picture and right. plant the building yeah. there. I mean, there's, there's, I think you're just going to see the second. There's a very steep bank down the, the river. You probably are aware of that. Yeah. Um, so this is like almost climbing the hill behind the town center here, yeah. looking at working back. And and that elevation is more or less where it is now. 
Okay. I mean, we're not excavating Pretty much out. Existing. Right. Just about. This shows the relation of how you access the basement level. Like you drive a, kind of down around the building, come in, and you can see on the left, that's the first floor. Mm -hmm. You can see how the building kind of sits naturally into that grade really well. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if it's on the uh, on your left. I thought it was back there. Oops, sorry. It's, 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 it's deceiving. You drop a lot. Yeah. Have you ever walked back there? I have. There, there's a green sea has their picnic tables up on top of that ledge and it drops about 20 plus feet wow. down to that, that lower piece. So we did uh, <clears throat> from the second building that was permitted, we did vary this. We, we added about uh, on this upper end, we added 300 square feet to each of the upper sides simply because the numbers weren't working and we needed to get some more rental on the apartments. Uh, the actual building stayed the same. Uh, yeah, the, you asked the question, or did you ask the question? Oh, Patrick, I'm sorry. Somebody I, asked the question about residential. Yeah, yeah. Came all residential. I mean, it, factually, the number is pretty common that if you can get 20 to $25 a square foot for commercial space, that's good. Like on the front of where Raymond James, which just left on Creamery Building One, um, went but the good side is maybe a coffee bookstores coming which would be way more vibrant for the street and everything but yeah those rents are 20 to 25 the residential is like 40 to 45 a square foot so mm -hmm. it yeah it, it the numbers sense. it drives and a you lot have no bit, problem a lot renting bit. residential no, no, but as you know cost no. keeps yeah so um the other thing I wanted to mention, though, from prior the prior building too that was approved, we pushed it this way to get it further from the cemetery because, you know, we've got to do some blasting on this corner. I so, did. thought that may be a good idea. Uh, is the height of this one different than the previously approved? No. Uh, no. No. The only thing different is we added those appendages on the upper north side, okay. uh, and uh, we uh, pushed it over this way. Yeah. But the siding is the same as what well was everything else is the same. Do, so, any, do any of your parking areas have um, charging stations? They do. Yeah, they do. The yep. turning radius for the fire no, truck? The, asking the Char fire charging station. station. Yeah. They're not on the plan. There's yeah. a little box that says EV in it. Okay. Um, I missed it on the plan? Yeah, it's small at this size, but yeah, we do. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we have them right now up at the upper solar canopy. Okay, let me see if I can pull it back up, David. And what will they, uh, what? It's in the key. They're in three classes, the charging stations? They are. And which, what are you trying to get to? Well, we were trying to get part of a grant for the, the real nice high voltage right. or the faster charging stations because it can service more cars. I see. We've um, been back and forth with them and we're still like in process. So in that upper parking lot. Yes, up here. Yeah. There's one there. What do, you, what do you have in the existing Thank you. class two? There's one on the other yes. end as well. Okay. Is there any in the lower one or not? Oh, it doesn't show very well, but there's where that canopy is, nine spaces. Yeah. There's do the same there. thing, put one on either end of the canopy. Okay. But it didn't show but up. But those are not there right now. Okay. Sorry to, sorry to interrupt you. I just, the question was in my head. I didn't want to forget it. Thank you. I think it does show them on the electrical plan. Yeah, yeah I, I saw them somewhere. <laughs> um, the electrical site utility plan. Uh, if we, should we dig into the items? Yeah. Sure. I think my proposal would be like, Table the, the building height one, or if you guys want to, it seems like that out of all of them will take up ninety percent of the. Well, oh, I actually have something to to I think to kind of clarify this. And Brendan, you didn't see this, but I sent it to the board. So I reached out to the town attorney. Yeah. So we had two different definitions of height in the regulations. You have height of a building yeah. and height of a structure, <laughs> and where this gets complicated is that all buildings are considered structures but not all structures or buildings. So it's kind of this weird, a weird thing. So I asked Dave, you know, how, you know, how should we kind of interpret this? Because if it's height of a structure, you have to take it from whatever the lowest point would be. So in this case, it would be the South elevation. And if you took it from that, that from the South average height from the South elevation is 38 feet, 
which is three feet over our max. But on the average, um, if you take but, so what you're supposed to do is take it from the average finished grade of the building. So the kicker would be to that is just to make sure it does say the highest point. So even going back and kind of looking at it, highest point of the roof, I know the roof is slightly angled. So the front of it is slightly higher than the back or the middle of it. So it would be important to just make sure that we, yeah, everything that was calculated I, where it was calculated. When I did that elevation, I, I basically did it exactly the way I did building one. Although at that time, the definition said it was the average height around the perimeter of the building to uh, to grade or pre uh, finished grade or pre-construction grade, whatever mm. was lower, which I could understand why you would want that in that it would keep people from piling earth up on the building to make it lower. <laughs> but at the same time, when we first started the project on building two, we were faced with that definition and we're in the cellar hole for the creamery. And it was, how, how do you determine where the pre-construction grade was? It was obviously lower, right? but where was it in the beginning? And nobody can tell you that. So I did what I did on the first building, which is exactly every time grade changed, I took the, the elevation from there to the top of the roof, all the way around the building. And I averaged that all in and I came up with uh, the height of the building. Now we've, we presented this to the fire department. They have no problems. We meet mm -hmm. their 32-foot threshold height in the front for access to the roof. All of the egresses out of the apartments are within their threshold. We added floor-to-ceiling windows off the corridors on each end so they could access it immediately from the sides. And, uh, uh, and the building is also sprinklered. I was just going to ask. Is the building it is sprinklered, and according to... Uh, the state fire marshal uh, international building code. What this is, is a mixed use three story building with a story below the grade plane. So in terms of that, the fire marshal interprets it as a three story building as, as a construction type, which allows us to do a 5B construction type. So it meets all those requirements. Uh, when I was looking at the new regulations, however, it does define what a building is. It defines what a structure is. What it doesn't define is what the base is. You can't find that anywhere. Maybe so, that's what Tyler was. Well, that's what it was. So, because what we were trying to figure out, so base is or the lowest point. So that's where we were having that. I mean, Ed, we're having that just conversation because originally when I was looking at it, and I talked to Keith as well as how should we interpret this right because it was clear say like, well what's the lowest side so when i looked at this like well you know you know your own renderings and your narrative notes that you intend to use the south elevation side so i'm like well in my mind that would be the lowest side based on this however now what talking having talked to david this is what you uh, are the town attorney and i'm a paraphrasing is that you need to use whatever the kind of like the simplest regulation the simplest definition would be so because structure covers everything building is kind of four four walls habitated that sort of stuff so it more clearly meets that so you can use um the average uh, finish grade. grade but that's the thing so you would need to make sure that that's the average finish grade is what was used not the average height but the average finish well the grade. painfulness of that process with that was we were tweaking the floor height by inches you know to, and then we ended up three feet i think below yeah we went Mac, to pre-cut studs <laughs> but it was uh yeah i still was struggling but i the guess the ceiling height well i guess the other thing too is, or did you measure it from the height was it from the dead center of the building or off of all the, all the way around the, the highest part on the eaves because it does there is a little bit of a pitch to it right so it says from like the highest, it does say from the highest point. Yes, just, just so you know. So for all of it. So you'd have to pick the highest point on the building and measure all the way around it to the highest point. Even though you'd never see the front of the building. From That's the how it read anyway. So this is yeah. the height of, I mean, of the building from the average. I guess grade. we presented the first building and got approval. We had a similar situation because grade drops off. Mm -hmm. Because it said average around perimeter. Hey, that's us. Time was happy with okay. It's the average from grade to the roof all the way around. 
So is that the interpretation now then? Are, you, are we an alliance? Are we aligned? And, um, yeah. Well, I wasn't, I was never opposed. I know, like yeah. I said. <laughs> no, I know, but I'm, I'm just, just trying to read the are we trying to say like that it is the average grade, how we calculate it. It's the average finish grade, sure. but we have to make sure that you're measuring from okay. the highest point of the building. It's interpret it as a building and not a structure, basically. Yeah. Okay. All right. We can just confirm that it's still the right. So can it, if so if the high like if the build if the the roof is slightly pitched upward towards the back take that highest point measure to the ground in the back but then transfer that highest point to the front of the building as well and measure from that highest point so I'm, yeah. i'll read i'll read it right to you not the height at that oh side. no <laughs> the average yeah and it's one of those like yeah so we're going with height of the building elevation the you know, vertical the distance point track the average base yeah. elevation. the vertical distance measured from the average elevation of the finished grade of the ground to yeah, the yeah. highest point of the roof so it's the highest point of the roof so if there's a section of the roof that's higher than the other you got to take the highest point and use that and then from the average finished grade all the way around the building how about the appendages that you do like the wings that we were just discussing well, i think that would be into that four and a half feet you're allowed to go above the roof wouldn't it all right. That I did not look at, so I could yeah. I would I can't well, speak tell them to that. But you, <laughs> with the pitch is so low, which is so flat compared to the average, easily makes it. Like so, we we I feel very comfortable. We make building height like right. so it was three feet or something. But that's just one that would just need to be clarified. It's like what yeah, where did you exactly? Yeah, I mean, what's from? the the change in elevation over that roof's got to be only six inches. Very right? little. Okay. Just enough. We're 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 not having interior drains because they never work. So what we're doing is we, we're slightly pitching the roof so that uh, we can uh, go to a scupper and bring the water down into a drainage system. Because, I mean, it is a large building and there's going to be considerable water coming out. So that's from the rain when the snow will just sit there until it melts? As it always does. Insulator. Let you go up there with your shovel. It's not mammoth. <laughs> Let me ask a question if you don't mind. And I don't know if you've ever computed this, but if you if you look at the height of the building as in feet above sea level, and the height of the existing building has feet above sea level, are they more or less the same height? And forgetting about the appendages on the top. Is Never one going to stick up higher than the other? Uh well actually uh like the horizon line is what you're yeah, talking yeah. about, like yeah. on the uh, that's the technical. Now you're getting real technical. Right. Well, don't I, I no. wonder if any, anybody did that because no. you know we can discuss where to begin in a, in a 35 foot height until we you know go crazy yeah. here. But when you look at it, are they going to look like they're so, more or less so, as good? So, so here's in answer to your question. Here's one thing I can tell you. Right now, the rear of this building is the same height as the front of building one. Okay. So at best a six inch difference. Actually, it starts a grade at the same spot. Oh, okay. Yeah. So actually, so the, the front of the is building is, they're, is, is, is they're, more they're, or less. they're going to look like the same, except for the appendages. On and the as top. you know, I could say, ah, if you look down the entry drive, you're going to see a lower building there. But the point is, you can't see down the entry drive. You don't know it's your building two until you're at building two. I, I don't care about that. I was just, yeah. I, you know, it'd be, I, certainly, I'm. I don't want to see a lot of uniformity. However, I think uniform height is probably um, more attractive than mm -hmm. non-uniform mm -hmm. height. And, but that's just me, and I so that is no. And it's me, that's me as well. Okay. And I think we struggled a little bit on building one to make sure that when we did that building, that it related to the scale of that corner with the building across the street. And my point is. Let's not shoot ourselves in the foot with the with yeah. the, the height. Yeah. Let's just keep them all the same. Well, you're trying to get the concept. I have to say, I totally agree. <laughs> well, you can answer it for yourself a little bit. You see where the two people are standing? Yeah. That grade drops, I don't know, two feet maybe from the right. corner of the building. Flat. Or it's, all, right. you know, it's like more or less drops. flat. It's the same three-story building on the, from. On the so when you're standing there, you're looking at the same. You're, you're looking at almost the same, like three-floor levels, three-floor levels. So, what is the height of those additional structures on the roof? They got absolutely the elevator penthouse is four foot six above the roof. And the these projections start at two feet and go up to four. I mean, if 
I mean, the way I read this, there's, oh so yeah. There, there's, Did you want to ax them? We can ax them right now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, there's a max height of 30, maybe no, there's a max height of 35 feet, but structures on the roof can go up to 45 oh, feet. So exactly. those fall under what structure. The building, is it that 32 foot threshold for the fire company? Because their ladders, I think, only go up to yeah. whatever okay. we were told. As long as these are belfries, you can go up to 45. Yeah. And they just can't be habitated. And again, those I think are measured from average, average finish grade as well. But, uh, yep. I don't know that. You... I'm I'm on the DRB in Waterbury. I shouldn't bring it up, but uh, we have the same problem with our height uh, designation and description. And we've been trying to get a change for about twelve years now with the planning commission. Hopefully, someday <laughs> we'll get there. But that one basically says it's the maximum building height is from average grade at the center line of the building now what's that take the center line of the building any way you want i've never <laughs> done a building that actually has a center line except for maybe this one it has one east and west and north and south mm -hmm. but i mean that's what we struggle with so it sounds like we have some clarity on the measurement all we need yeah. to do is confirm that we made it yeah, yeah, yeah just to make sure right. from that right. highest okay point. we should move on then yeah yeah, yeah. Brennan, cool. right we just spent the whole time talking about it uh the erosion control plan phasing for construction of building two. Yeah, John. When this building gets constructed, we'll need to apply for a erosion control permit from the state of Vermont, and a plan will be submitted to that. And so I'll just submit that plan and the permit to you. Yeah, so we would need that prior for them to be able to approve it because that is a condition on approval that you have to, that's a standard that's in there. And it's also a standard if you look at, oh, 650.5. Where it says, and this is for the subdivision regs, and what makes your project particularly tricky too is not only does it require conditional use, it's also technically a subdivision, so it has to meet the subdivision standards as well. And the subdivision standards note that um, the smallest practical area of land shall be bare at any one time during development. So that means is that rather than have them strip the whole thing, build it, and you, they, there kind of has to be some something that you're comfortable with of phasing how that goes about you know, being exposed. So like, do you want them to, what type of landscaping do you expect to see at what various phase of the project to kind of be in that? And there's some other sections that referenced in there, what needs to be in there. That's within our work. purview, not the state. That's you, yeah, that's you guys. You guys have to approve that. And that's similar to what we're considering on the next agenda item. And also the land, like a lot of other landscaping stuff is similar to what we did with, with, uh, with the uh, Northfield Savings Bank. So right. you guys have to approve the maintenance agreement for how they're going to maintain the landscaping, what's that going to look like, all that sort of stuff. Well, providing a erosion control plan is very simple. We'll have to start. Great. Let's move on. Total estimated construction costs of building two to ensure that they, us, are spending the minimum requirement on landscaping. So your minimum is 1% of the total construction cost, because you guys are going to be way, hit the highest threshold anyway. 1% of the total cost of construction has to be in landscaping. Now, given that your timeline for construction is roughly 10 to 15 years, that's kind of tricky to do to like kind of like... Can't we do that on a building by building basis? So that's what I was suggesting in there is that to phase it in is that rather than do 1%, because 1% is the floor. So if they spend more than that, they can spend more than that. They just have to spend 1% on total. But if we're going to phase this thing in over 10 years, it may make sense to require them that they do it building by building for the 1% total construction cost of phase two, which would be whatever's being built in phase two, whether that's the building, all the parking, all that sort of stuff. You'd have to be 1% of that cost. So they'd have to provide that to you to make sure, estimated obviously, and then we'd have to verify it. But Provide that so that way they know that they're. I think that makes the most sense. Well, so what we we that's what we did for building one. I mean, we're, we're still finalizing uh, the cost, but it's it's roughly six and a half, depending on what happens and how we deal with the commercial space, because the whole eight thousand foot floor box would be left unfinished. Mm -hmm. So it's the three levels of apartments, and um, and that's why like it, the the timeline on the build out is really based on commercial tenants for the other buildings or the residential densities changing. That's why the, the long-term phase two works right in, in the current economy, whether see what happens with interest rates, but that building 
this site plan incorporated about seventy thousand dollars. That's what Ian made a landscape architect plan that goes with this. I think that says right there that shows what the landscaping was, and it was about seventy grand for the green spaces and the trees and the plantings and blah blah blah. Right. Just so over one percent of it. It was right. It was right there anyway. So that's how that's how we based it because we were like, well, we're not going to go landscape three and four and then tear it apart, and it didn't make any sense. No. Yeah, no. So, so, and I would just note that part of this is like in the narrative and stuff is just to note those because sure. part of it for me it was like yeah. seventy two thousand. I didn't know if that was for the whole thing, building two. It didn't really yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't speak to that. Um, and I was going to get a landscape maintenance plan from Ian as well, just satisfying what you had talked about um, for that. Uh, the D confirmation applicants provide illumination information for the persons of walls illuminated by external fixtures. So basically, the ISO illumination would be for like where the light hits the wall. There's certain requirements as to how much lighting you can have kind of reflecting off of that. So that information would kind of be need to know. Again, is that really a showstopper? Not really. It's on it's on the, I thought it was on one plan. plan. You, you have a matte finish on the building, right? I think it's on the plan. It, all, yeah, it's all, all matte the lights. Finish. So you're not going to get that much reflection. No, and, it, and frankly, those lights are basically just night lights so people can work their way into the building. Uh, and uh, well, we had to do that entire, it was costly, the lighting. Yeah. The the plan and the photometrics. The other thing is the there photometrics for the whole site and the, there, all the buildings. Yeah, and there was some concerns. Uh, there's photometrics shown for everything, but there was concerns on building one from some of the neighbors that the lights were a little too right. bright, and we ended up shielding them and uh, basically uh, putting a coating on them to get the light levels down. Uh, we're using different a different company, and it's uh, a different light color and uh, a different, you know, uh, illumination level. So hopefully- Building setbacks. So. Yeah, but we've gone to basically make it what that became. One of those lessons learned. Yeah, generations. correct. Uh, I think this one's pretty straightforward. Confirmation, what lights will be served by underground power? Yeah, because if you look at on the master, on the site plan, so it shows like some some of these other ones here show like why like underground utility uh, where was it here UGP underground power shows a few of them being serviced but these ones back here I don't know if those are served if they have their own battery or if they're already served they're on the site plan but yeah it's not this one, you should look on the site and look at the plan. it's very self explanatory let me see let me pull it up my here. site plan just shows the main power feed into the structure it doesn't show the there it is. underground connections to all the light holes. Because there was those two that were on the site plan that were back here. Yep. That those aren't shown on this. So it'd be important just to just to note whether or not those are so all your, those. all your electrics under underground, right? Of course. Yeah, I think part of it is there are some lights that you were talking about up here. Yeah. That, that are just were above. part of phase put in with the first building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just again. This is my just what I'm going off of what I have, and I noticed those were down there, and I didn't see those up there, yeah, and it wasn't yeah. explained that those were already served. So yeah, they're up there now. <laughs> um, uh, the next again is parking lot light. Confirmed parking lot lights are. I, uh, so there was one light that I couldn't find that ISNA de designation on, and I noted it in the lights in the lighting plan. Again, it's it may be on it may just possibly be on there and I just didn't see it. But the number is that light. It is so oh, it's A L E D 3178. So that just one I couldn't find the it's the designation on that one. So what was it again? Which one? Yep. It is was it a pole light or I believe so. It is uh A L E D 3178. The other ones all had the, I could find the ISTA designation on that one. I couldn't. So it's possible I may have just missed it. But. Yeah, I know it's the poles are a little lower when it, they get close to the building than the ones that are out on the other side in the parking lot. Uh, I'm 
I don't check that. Uh, the next one is just discussion about the height again on the raised roof portions. I don't think we... um, there is one quick thing just to, to point out is that you have a parking lot shown here on this and on the site plan. There's no parking lot yeah. and there's a community garden. So yeah. just be good to use the same site plan as kind of a, the, sure. the template. To and do we should put a plans. note in that if there's any conflict that the site, civil site plan overrules. Yeah, I'm sure that's what you meant, but I didn't say that. <laughs> no, I know, but I think that'll be a good note to have for sure, because a and R, I I mean, that, the amount of time and <laughs> hours we spent with a and out there walking and talking. Gee, I'm so surprised. Um, um uh, yeah, the 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 there's a height of the raised portions need to be measured from I think we already talked about it. Yeah, so that's kind of one of those yeah. other things that we can um the all plants are indigenous that Ian will provide. He actually did it. I just didn't bring it because I figured we were gonna have to do other stuff anyway. Um, the landscape architects that we provide it. Was, um, so this is kind of a double take on just kind of on the landscape of like, yeah, yeah, what is it like? Is it for just specify what it is? Is it for mm -hmm. building two and just what you would plan to do with the rest of the landscaping? And what you could do is kind of as we talked about, if we're going to have to phase out the rest of the buildings, is just say, okay, this land, if there's landscaping stuff, I, I know there's that optional community garden. Mm -hmm. Just need to know when you would plan on on doing that. Yes. What's what's your decision making on that? On the, it was based on a few things. We've been working with the like the, the Joko settlers that um, we had to get our whole right away reestablished with them when they purchased the the farm back there, and uh, we talked about with them either doing a community garden there. A lot of it deals with the state. Imagine stormwater area and so the underground stormwater system shown it's very expensive and and whether we can repatriate it to get a stormwater permit um how much of that area is used a and r wasn't sure they wanted the community garden there so they we still have to go through them with more stuff and the proximity to the wetland buffer so that that was really it was there's maybe three or four moving parts around the the garden and then it was the discussion about water and providing water. And so it was nothing really defined, David, but there's a few moving parts with it. Okay. Um, <laughs> Sounds like it's not a very good idea. <laughs> it was a great idea. It's like a simple idea, idea, idea at the time. Execute. Until yeah. you let the bureaucrats out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the the again the landscape maintaining yeah. plan I said that, and there's that yeah. other weird one too and this is this is more from the <clears throat> subdivision regs not the zoning regs is the two inches diameter at six inches from the ground you'd have to confirm that that is a standard for, in, for I didn't really understand that mm. so you need to take six inches from where the plan is above the ground and as it say is it two inches wide or just note that hey these are going to be these are two inches wide at six inches above the ground and that's from Oh, what section was that? Hang on a minute here. That was not sure. So you don't have like a super tall skinny yeah. thing, or you just so you have something. I think that's two inches around. So it's like not like something the size of my pinky. It's something that's robust and maturity. maturity of the tree. I think is what you know. but, but it, yeah, they but they tend to do better when they're planted. Right. I understand that, but it's plantings like plantings are. That's just hours and right. things. Perhaps. That's what the standard would be. I think this would be more for the trees. I think is what a I reference. So. That's a big tool. Up there. Yeah, I would okay. say. Okay. Yeah, so this would be more in reference to a tree. It's re I understand it if it's in reference to a tree. If it's in reference to plant. So no. maybe it, it, maybe it was just a wording thing, Tyler. Maybe in the definitions it says tree planting. It or? does, and I think part of this too is also me trying to surmise what right. is in there. Yeah. So well, the for, we can just at least an eye. architect will tell you that's how they do it. And that's okay. fine. I just need something that says yeah. these is what they are. It's just a stand. It's one of those box checking things. Uh, again, this is all about landscaping. It's about the phasing again and the confirmation of the number on I. It's really just the same thing. Um, 
Here, this is John or Bud. Confirmation whether or not dead end road will terminate in a circle or hammerhead. Hammerhead. A hammerhead applicant. Yeah, what is required? So you would have to, if you're going to do a hammerhead, that would have to be approved by the um, select board. If you're going to do a circular one. So this is what I, and I mentioned this in my notes, where you have that turning diagram. Yeah. Or the, and I wasn't sure if that was the plan for how the road would work. Because the board can approve that. If it's a hammerhead, it has to be approved by the select board. So you can, I, I provided a turning radius plan that shows a truck can come in and make the full loop around the lower parking lot and go back out. So I guess that is, I just meant it's not a cold, a traditional round cul-de-sac like the end of the development. So, and then we provided near the dumpster and also a hammerhead so the truck could pull straight in, turn itself around by the dumpster and leave. So I guess I'm providing both. Where is that? Uh, the plan? Let me see if I can there. find this here. I mean, I have it. We have it in a package. It's top right. Is that right? Hang on a second here. Uh, so there's an updated site plan, which was separate. The, and the rest of their application materials here. So it's each side. Find it. Is there a hammerhead there? Now, I'm just trying to remember what packets, exactly. it, what part it's in here, because it should be. Oh, yeah. Southeast right corner. There. Southeast Keep corner. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, and that's the thing, because I figured that's what you meant, but it also didn't explicitly say that. So just clarifying that you intend the road, because the DRB can approve that. But if it's a hammerhead, it has to be go to the select board. Go to the select board. Okay. Well, then I we want a DRB. <laughs> that's why it was important <laughs> to to know which one you wanted. So that's what. Yeah, that's what we're submitting for the DRB to approve. Yeah. Yes, correct. And that was based on that. How, how long was the truck? That's just that. That shows the truck. truck. Yeah, that's the full size pumper truck, thirty six feet or something. Oh, I'm down on the right. Yeah. So I just pick like some little, you know, short delivery truck. That's the real fire truck. I'm wondering if we've got any sort of big picture questions that we want to use this time to work through. There's a lot of technical Smaller items stuff. that we guys can pay for. Well, they're if here, you're going to stick to our 815. So you, if you want, I think the big ones for you guys, and I don't want to speak for you, it would be three is the color scheme for building two. You guys have to approve that. Um, let me see whether uh, the uh, let me see technical review of like the stormwater specifications That's by the town engineer. One thing I'm wondering about so, just procedurally, so this is a final subdivision application and PUD. So, the PUD is a conditional use for which a zoning permit is issued. So, you know, it's for if for which you guys your decision authorizes the PUD basically. So we, this is probably the we're making just you are deciding so long story short reason how, I'm asking just to tie it in is just i'm wondering about the time frame and whether that's you know like we need things need to be done in a reasonable time frame i don't know if that means really quick or not, not too so quick. here's where this gets complicated right because traditionally a plain unit development right in an ideal world would be they know what they're going to build for all the buildings today to have a phasing plan for when those are going to be built down to the light bulbs that are going in. As Brendan and everybody's kind of explained, that's not realistic for their project given just the market conditions and other things. However, you are supposed to show all of that stuff when you do a planned unit development. That's the point of doing it. That's what you have the plan set for so you know kind of what, what you're building. So essentially that probably should have been done a while ago. It was never done. It was kind of approved under interim zoning. So it's kind of this weird thing. So we're trying to kind of catch up on some things that should have already been done. I'm okay with the way they're doing it. Uh, mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's going to be a couple of years for this building's online anyways. Yeah. And, and you're and right. to, to tell to, for you to tell us what you want to do with three, four. Yeah. And and really, we, we did think it through. I mean, we just didn't plop rectangles on the project. I mean, this is this lower building. That's a concept. It matches this one. And we have the similar rendering for the upper building. So, I mean, we have thought it out. And I think also, you know, I'm thinking about other PUDs we've approved in the past. We didn't require a design for every house in a PUD. We just required to show where those houses right. would go. Yeah. yeah, where we did, well, this we is did the, the design. Zone, I think that required this is the only one that... So, this is the most regulatory intensive zone that we have in the town, hands down. It's a toss up between this or the village downtown, which directly abuts it. 
So normally we don't get into color, visual renderings, all that stuff. Down but we do, we do in this instance. That's where that, where I'm coming back to like that site plan. Like you guys technically have to approve, like, do you want the bump outs on top or not? That's your guys call to approve it. And if they make any changes to it, they have to come back here to you guys to get re authorization for the approvals for that. And I get, this is what makes this so challenging. It's like, yeah. if you come up and you need to make a change on the flyer for because of whatever reason, you have to come back in here to do it because that's what the regulations right. in that particular yeah, district said. So it's just, so we I know on you guys, it's all very the hard details to do. on building two and building three and four, we just did the elevations and the footprint. So they were cohesive in I'm design. Okay. That works with me. I yeah. And the I footprint so. worked on the site. And then the parking worked for the square foot footprint and all the parking table for the uses of the master plan on the site. And that's what we did the traffic study for. And so everything was cohesive as a PUD master plan, except for all the light bulbs aren't designed for building three and four. Per se. How, just, how, how does unit mix fit in that? Unit mix, yes, Brendan. Um, in, in terms of which for building two, building no, two. In terms of forecasting in the future, like if you're you've got the 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 size down, you've got the square footage down, but don't you have to do a unit mix to calculate things like um, traffic studies and other? All we were all we proposed for approval was a certain use. And the square footage, which is really all we can do after building two, is commercial, unless it changes for the Richmond or Jolena Court. Even, right, I was per se. Say, because I remember uh, years ago we approved like the overall yeah. split. Yeah. And, and then I mean, this is why this took an extra year as it was, because I mean, when Ravi was here, he was there was a big subcommittee for housing for Richmond right. study, and they were going to potentially give the Julina court district more density and made a you know, proposal of how the density was going to be used. It, it, it involved a whole nother big tangent of stuff. And it kind of it, it hit the ticket room floor for better, for worse. And if it the town is after that. more housing. Right. Yeah. Why it was it approved? Sense and you to then we'd have building three and four designed to a T if it was, you know, because then we'd still try and fold a small commercial piece right. into, if we could, you know, bookend it in up near the railroad tracks. The other building, most likely it's probably just residential. It's down in the middle of no man's land behind here. Mm -hmm. um, but um, that that's why building three and four obviously would sit because Sorry, there's a commercial three-story or two or one-story mm -hmm. building. But, doesn't pay for and it. a little trickier thing though too is like uses because this also gets so hard and we talked a little bit about use banks and things like that <clears throat> because originally they had a wide range of uses we've kind of pared that down to kind of match what they've done traffic you know their traffic study modeling and and parking and all that sort of stuff because that does matter because there's certain uses are are have different parking requirements associated with them so if they're going to do them, they have to show that they meet the minimum standards. And if they don't meet the minimum standards, they have to come ask you guys to waive those minimum standards. You also would need to check, too, if they want to add, let's say, a restaurant use to building one. I'm not sure if it's there or not. But you need to say each of a building and retail use inside the same spots, like a cough, like a bookstore coffee shop would have. You need to know what square footage of that use is for the restaurant, what square footage of the use is for retail, because they both have different parking calculations or you would have to do parking calculations for the entire thing as the most intensive which would be restaurant which starts to throw your your parking things out of whack starts to get at the traffic study stuff which triggers our trigger for requiring a formal traffic study is 40,000 square feet of land development area and 74 vehicle pm trip ends if my off the top of my head yeah. but the other thing, a restaurant triggers some big deal stuff with the fire marshal's office, so yeah. it makes it not real. So that's where it's hard, is like, you, like really ironing out those specific uses. And then if you want to come back in, you can make it. But when it's when they're on our application, they have to show you today that they meet all the requirements for those if that's what they want to do. But it's yeah. really right. you could have that's five hundred uses, or you could yeah. have five uses. Of so it. we kept really we kept it simple for the uses of like building one, residential, yeah. commercial, um, like whatever. Tyler, we had four 
for use. Well, you have four because you have the research one that you modeled. Yes, and for a green on... And then um, if, if an applicant, a, a tenant shows up, then they're going to come back. And it's like the yeah. burden's on I mean, them. Like, we don't know what the future is going to be, and we can't redefine the whole future. So we pick the uses yeah. that we're going to. So every time, every time a they change a commercial use, and someone wants to do something different, they got to come back to us. If it's not pre, if it's not pre-approved, yep. Yeah, they were back like several years ago. They came in for it was a change in tenant or something. Yeah, but I thought we approved it. Well, that's what this that's what the simple. PUD process is for, right? You come in with this bank of uses or this all these different uses that you want, right? So that way you approve them all in one go. But didn't we do that? But not for point. Yeah, but that was that's where we're. That's why this is. It was kind of not done in its totality, which is kind of the issue. Is now we're trying to do that. <laughs> As a practical matter, once again, you said there's not going to be any any commercial use of building two. Is that correct? No, it's it's incorrect. The first floor. First floor. The first, first floor, floor is all commercial. Like the first floor of, of the yeah, like of the building one. Yeah. yeah. So the, same thing. It's going to be the same. Same thing. Building three and four, that was the big unknown. Oh, and that's why I was like, well, we don't know how long we put a timeline. You know, it could be could be four years, could be two, could be like, 10 to 15. But the ratios are for buildings one and two conform with the original request. Correct. Correct. Because right. one and thing, pretty good indicator of what's going to happen here, I would think. I mean, we've had people come in. Yeah, they want half of the lower level. And then... You know, Brendan deals with them for six months and then they decide, no, no, we don't want to do it. So, I mean, so one thing that we and I talked more about Josie with this, and I'm not sure. I think Brendan was talking about like use banks. So what you can do is like, OK, we don't know what how much use we're going to need. So let's say if you want all these uses, right, you have and you don't know exactly where those uses are going to occur, how much square footage it is. You have to model all the commercial use off the most intensive use or. What you have to do is come up with a bank of use. Like, okay, we want, let's say, 10,000 square feet of retail space. And we want another 2,000 square feet of rental of restaurant space. And they can chop it however they want. as long as, And it's up to me, really, to kind of keep track of how much have they used, how much do they still have. They have to show me where it is in the building, right? Otherwise, they got to show that this whole thing could be modeled for whatever the most intensive use is. And then that starts to hit vehicle PM trip ends, it starts to hit parking minimums. And then, you know, there's a lot of, and those, that's just how the stuff's written. You know, that's just kind of how you have to. But can't you compare it on a case by case basis? Well, you could, but then they're just going to keep, your guys are going to become, every back. time they want to change the use over there, they're coming back to you and guys. And maybe there won't be a lot of times we want to change. Well, you know what I'm saying? How broad is that, is that word used? If any use that they want to do it's in within like if it lets them allow thing okay yeah and if they're coming back and want something I mean, different, different than what's chances approved are that far approved. back off the of bridge street it's going to be business just like it is on the first building right i mean you're not going to put retail back there i wouldn't think i have to be mindful we're down to 10 minutes yeah um maybe color you guys want to comment on on clock the color scheme keeper. what's that the swiss clock keeper <laughs> Uh, Everyone else yeah, is go ahead. We have, we have, it. By it. We yeah. have an elevation yeah. that shows the colors we're using and where they're going. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, you know, we're it, obviously it, it, no, it, you know, know, basically just yeah, yeah. We're obviously limited to what colors we can get from those companies, and uh, we didn't want to do another uh, copy of the first building, and so we're trying to vary it. Not to say on three and four or one of those, we might go back a little closer to the first one just to mix it up. I don't want every building looking the same like we're seeing down in Williston. Yeah. Well, the tricky part is with that is that that does kind of is your guy's call to make because it does say it has to be kind of keeping in with, with what's the yeah. character. The well, character basically, what's there. there's an so upper level just, yeah. band that's darker, similar to building one. And then we're trying to get more into the bluish tones and such. And as always, when this gets copied, these colors are nothing like what's in the show. And I'm not arguing the aesthetic value. I'm just arguing that's just what it says. They're basically it. muted. It's dull. muted. It's but you're not you're not painting this thing fuchsia. So. Right. No, they're all they're all muted. 
earth tone colors. They're blue grays, okay. slate grays. There's, they did have some know, red features, black. but Brendan nixed yeah. it. I, I, think, <laughs> I think it looks great. I do. Yeah, let's move on. One other big ticket issue for you. Is there any, you know, what, and the point I was trying to get at earlier was are there any issues with, you know, zoning permits expiring that need to be monitored if we're, so if for a project that goes out over this time? I, this is the first one I've really dealt with that. Where we're so getting. this is more for me. So what you really, the only thing that would be getting a permit theoretically would be the work for building two, whatever would be on that permit. So whatever you approve for phase two, whether that's okay. We want in phase two, it's going to be all the parking that's shown on here, the stormwater infrastructure, all building to the carports, all that sort of stuff, right? That has a two year, um, um, two, two year with the option to do a third year one time extension that I have the authority to do. So that'll be from the time we issue our from the time they, they issue, from the time they pull the permit so they can come in once you get your approval <clears throat> your approval i forget exactly when it expires but it's uh i think it's like two years or something like that i'm i'm i'd have to look but whenever assuming your approval doesn't ex hasn't expired they come in say okay yep we want to do we're going to do building two this is what we expect to have done by then then i come in and say okay you guys have three years to finish all of this too you come back to me inside of that two years, like, hey, we're running behind a little bit. We need another year. And I can do a one tight year extension. That would just be for the work that they're trying to get approved with building two. So if there's some stuff that you don't want to have or you don't think you could do in that time frame, that would be something wise to split onto another phase. Because once you're there, it expires and you got to come back and pull the permits again and all that sort of stuff. We're so building two. We're building correct? two, yeah. And you'll be back in for the details with three, which starts a new clock. Yeah. Our, our and approval. And for yeah. Your... It wouldn't expire three and four because you, you're going to phase, you would have to phase that in. Yeah. That's how be that's built in your up condition of approval that they have to show so detailed our plans. Our decision of whatever we want to do with the, what the master plan has no expiration. No, no, that doesn't expire, no. Once it's approved and it's like the mylar and stuff for it is recorded, we can come in and it's like, yep, we got it. You know, we have a master plan. We kind of have a rough timeline. So I know it's like 10 to 15 years for phases three and four. Try and be like, if you expect them both to take 10 to 15, note that. Or if you say, we think we could do three and four in like five years and then four in like five to 10 or something like that, just to be clear to note that. I would just say it depends all about the town residential zoning right now anyway. You know, it just has to, know, you just have exactly. to state that like in yeah. the in the narrative or whatever what you expect it to be. And the, the, the parking was all based around those other buildings too. Like it's it's an approval process. We're not asking <clears throat> for more or less, but building two only needs the parking X number of spaces. Well, that would be just like okay, is that gonna be like and just for you when you come to me, be like, okay. That's going to be like whether it's the parking, let's say, right up here, yeah. down here, all of it. Correct. You know, Correct. All that, just all that sort of stuff would just need to be figured out. Item yeah. Yeah. Does the board uh, want the um, my engineering plans to go to the town engineer for me? That was a recommendation of um, of Keith that we have that done. That was done on building one as well because there is quite a bit of stormwater stuff there's sewer stuff there's also i believe you guys are having a pump but station the state, installed the state for that. gives a permit for that i mean even if but they're our tying in our infrastructure are they're, they're tying, tying into the town infrastructure so that our engineer would just look at the tie-in he'd look at that and we would probably have like a civil engineer just evaluate it too as well this is what i was talking to keith about but keith was pretty keen on on having that having that done it was done for building one as well I would think it just makes for the water sewer. Because I think you guys had a pump station going up and instead of having connecting into the old. Yeah, which we're still thing. actually trying the woman. So that's actually... a, that's a something we could talk about in deliberate session. Yeah, there's something like that. It's, it's your call to whether you want to continue it or however you want. Like we'd be working on a punch list of stuff that I would then go take my notes, take whatever additional information you want. Have another meeting with me, Keith, and whatever. What we've we've talked about doing to make this easier and give you guys more something digestible is kind of more of a punch sheet that 
I sign, you sign. Like, okay, we're all on the same page as to all the details and stuff that we, you know, because this is you know that we expect. So when I get your application, like your narrative is going to have all this stuff on it. So that way I know mm -hmm. this is what I expect to see on this. You guys know what you have to deliver, and that way we kind of are all think take some of the ambiguity out of it because I know there was a lot of I had back and forth with you and Ed, and Josie, and uh, trying to get get some things. I think this would just be bring it all but together. At this point in time, in front of us, what we have to do is, is approve a master plan, and we don't have enough information from you yet to do that. Because again, like there just isn't. You don't know. You have you guys would have to. Do you want the bump outs on the roof, or do you not want the bump okay. outs on the roof? Because you guys approved that specific thing, the specific color. This tree's here. That light post is there. And if there's variations to that, and it does say any change, any change to the exterior requires them to come back to you. They want to paint it a different color, comes back in you. They want to use different siding, comes back. Oh, we in get you. it. We're stuck with it. So <laughs> I, I like Tyler's suggestion. Um, you know that we move that we continue the application until you know that's the time that you guys have got to agree. We'll bring back the change all landscape the and then put it back on the agenda. I mean the uh, erosion control basically the will align. Yep. Clean up all the miscellaneous things that we've discussed that we need to bring through and get some clarity that, around that. that. Makes it doesn't, do that. doesn't you, feel like you it's do it not. all, then it should be a fairly quick yeah. meeting. Yeah. I so think everything looks good. Looks great. Yeah. So, and what you guys could do, because I don't know what the timeline would take you guys to get stuff together. I don't know if you want to continue it to like two meetings from now or if you want to, because here's the thing, if we continue to date certain, you don't have to warn it again. But if you just continue it and you don't have a date, no, let's mind, continue you have to it to a date certain. If you're not ready, it will continue again. No, just, That's true. I think the next one. You can hold it, Tyler, and say you want to continue again, and we'll continue. Yeah, the next one is, we'll a, is the next one available. Yeah. 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 So, if they're they're not about it. so I would entertain a major hurdle. I know what's that day that's when you're back to my, my ticket. Whatever Tyler, 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 Tyler needs a minute. Hang on a second. I'm just trying to get back to my note section here. Hang on. Okay, okay so, so we only need one one month. You sorry, David, do you have a question? No, I, I couldn't hear. Are we doing one month on this? That yes. Okay. Hang on a second. Let me get the date. That would be hey, Tyler, you got two minutes. So yes, the June 14th, there. 2023. Just want to make sure I'm really certain on the date certain. I think we specified the year. So All right. Is that a, yes, I, I, I move we continue the application for the June hearing. Second. That's right. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You guys... It was a very good 15 on the nose. Well, and we appreciate your input. Yeah. I mean, frankly, my head was spinning on a few of those zoning <laughs> issues. I wasn't trying to scare you guys with the height thing. I was kind of going back and forth. Scared us. Too. Well, I mean, no, it, it's, it's like every community. It's one of those things. I got to read it, and I'm like, yeah. please tell me there's another. Well, in every community, that. there seems to be an issue with the definition of building height and what they're trying to do. Never heard of the center line. That's a new one. Oh, that's the water barrier. Yeah. We've been trying to get a you change. Thank the town, town attorney like, for that it, one. I mean, yeah. what happened? happens if your center of grade is well what the board did we finally uh, threw the, the zoning administrator yeah. out well that we get the height thing and we decided that it was because well, we used average yeah. we go with average around it's just so, box check it's pretty much we're pretty standard because this like i said this so, is about the only thing i've ever done that it has a center line there was a little meet with yeah, me to get something <laughs> i'll type up something that like, here's what we need certainly uh, nothing i've done in inside that we know Exactly. I also wasn't I expect some of the stuff we've done in Stella. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like, okay. there's no limitation on height. Does anyone need to use well, that? Their, the before the the their, their definition like, seems to work. I don't know why. It's, there's a there's a question I, from the chat. Yeah, exactly. size. But it does seem to work. Yeah, that's right. You don't get crazy high things, but yeah. Anyway, thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. David, there was a question in the chat if we were accepting public questions did the public not get a chance i thought we asked the public if they wanted to no, speak on this one. i never did well we continued it so we'll continue it for the next one okay i'll just let them know in the chat i appreciate that comment because you're right hey that was me hi david it's judy rosovsky hi judy how are you doing good did you have uh are you here for which hearing 
Well, I'm here for the other one, but I'm interested in this one. So, and then I was also interested in your process about allowing public access. So, but I can send you a note about that. I don't need to take up your time right now. Okay, that'd be appreciated, Judy. And I apologize if I overlooked you. No problem. I could have spoken up too, but I was, you know, bopping in and out. Anyway. Speaking up. (laughs) Thanks. I need a reminder sometimes to like, remember the people on the screen. Right. Well, there weren't any <laughs> except David. Right. That's true with the share screen. And, and I looked at that. Well, with that one, it seemed like people were continuing in this one discussion. Yeah, that was That totally was an oversight. We can, start, we can start with questions at the next one. Ask the emails on Monday. You want to grab them now? It's no decision. We'll wait a few minutes until Tyler returns. That's You also have time? Yeah. Okay. F- FYI, you're still sharing your screen. Yeah, why don't you get that stuff off the screen? <laughs> you can see how many get more comments. thousands of people are out there. Nope, there's a few. Do you want me to uh, give the general warning about the put your information in the chat or? I'm sorry, general. Do you want me to let? Everybody, I'll just do it. Yeah. Everybody listening on there, if you haven't already, please go into the oh, chat, absolutely. put your name, um, address, what item that you're interested on, although we could probably figure that out at this point, and then put uh, your address. So that way, if you guys want to get copies of the decision, um, if I don't have that information, I can't get you guys to copy. So please put that in the chat function. And also for anybody out there, um, if you want to be what's classified as an interested party, you need to speak or give written evidence to qualify. So the second hearing on our agenda is a continuation of PRE SUB 2023-04, Hillview Heights LLC, and they are seeking preliminary subdivision for a seven lot subdivision on Hillview Road uh, to create six new residential lots with one existing residential lot. Um, Let me swear you, you are all still under oath. Let me swear you again. You swear for him to tell the truth, all the truth, nothing but the truth. You I do. Great. So where were we? I think we gave you a bunch of things to uh, clarify. And we had some, we suggested some other things like combining the lot, the uh, driveway for lot one and two. So why don't you tell us where you're at with both what what new information you want to give us and any thoughts on uh, some of the stuff that we suggested. Yeah, I'll, I'll go I'll go down the five items in the in the memo and just explain where we're at and what we've changed. So the first item was uh, combining the curb cuts for lots one and two. The new site plan that has been shared. Um, now shows a combined curb cut between lots one and two. And with that change, we took the opportunity to simplify the lot lines between lots one and two. It's now a, just one straight lot line. This increased the size of lot one to 2.08 acres, and lot two is now 8.47, a slight decrease. Um, item two was updating the traffic study. A revised traffic study has been provided. Um, with the now seven lot subdivision being proposed as opposed to the original nine lot subdivision, it shows a decrease in um, uh, impact on the on Hillview Road. And also with that traffic study, the, the question was brought up of when the traffic count was taken, which was um, 2021, 
in in this document, as explained by BHB, the rate um, increase per year from 2021 to 2023 was 0.08 uh, increase per year. So the now that's a general increase, not just this specific. Correct. So th this this was by VTrans on um, uh, I believe it's Huntington Road, just just at the end of yeah, that. Yeah. Um, so basically, what it shows, VTrans showed no increase or very little increase from 2021 to 2023 when the the count on Hillview uh, took place. Um, number three. You asked for a uh, technical review um, and more information on stormwater runoff from the three, uh, or sorry, excuse me, four stormwater uh, systems. So I provided a summary of the runoff, where the runoff goes, um, and, and how it's decreased and treated. Uh, a quick summary of that document. Um, Subcatchment 1S is the infiltration basin. I provided decreased volumes of runoff um, from existing to proposed um, and how much uh, water is infiltrated um, versus discharged overland. Uh, and then Subcatchment uh, 2S and 3S are, are very similar. Um, all three are gravel wetlands. There's no decrease in volume, but it's slowed down um, because of the, the spoils don't allow for infiltration practices. And I explain uh, where the runoff goes in 2S, it goes to the municipal roadside ditch. Um, and I provided um, volumes and times of concentrations that meet um, the state requirements. And in 3S, both gravel wetlands discharge um, uh, via direct um, discharge to the, the stream on site, which is an unnamed tributary of the Huntington River. <clears throat> item four, a master plan was asked for. The site plan provided is the master plan. Um, there is no uh, development beyond what is being proposed. Um, so C1, C1 is effectively our master plan. Um, and um, the last item was provide additional information. We have issues on lot seven. So that will be your 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 agricultural yes lot. so I'll, so what part of that lot will be agricultural and what will be the rest of it so the the flower farm is is labeled now on c1 it's to the uh northeast of the end of the road um which is a field drive that exists today it's going to continue to be a field drive and then south um, of the flower farm is where we're proposing the development, which is a single family home and detached garage. Um, and then the, there's no development on the steep slopes of the hillside. That's to remain natural um, in, the, in the master plan. Is that mostly forested? It's all forested up on, on, the, on the hillside. There's a tree line uh, you can see around the meadow where the uh, flower farm is. Right. Um, and yeah, and that kind of covers uh, item five, which is the the continuation of the road. It's a field drive that's that's there today, being used for the agricultural activities. So I think that covers all all five items you had asked for. If there's any additional questions, I probably will answer them. Is your forest under a forestry plan? No. Mm -hmm. I have a stormwater management question. Mm -hmm. um, and without looking at the report, which I probably won't be able to figure out anyway, um, one of the things that came up last time was uh, stormwater management off of lot one and two. Mm -hmm. um, and you provided the report, and tell me in summary, if you can, how that report or the results of that report would affect anything that you've done on lot one and two or are you going to do anything as a result of that report i suppose that's a better way to put it. so the, the report explains um volumes so uh, what the system does is it uh, takes pre-existing conditions and compares them to proposed conditions the the goal of the system is to minimize or lessen the impact from existing to propose. So what the this summary provides is the amount uh, reduction in runoff from the site from existing to what's 
after construction, after proposed. So for example, at the 10 year storm, the runoff from the site decreases uh, by 92%. 92% of the runoff is, is infiltrated. 8% is, is uh, discharged overland. Okay, but the, the real question is, is, is your is your is your site once it's developed going to impact or or increase the runoff or have you taken steps? It's a, it's a decrease. Your steps will decrease that. Correct. Yep. Yes. Yeah. And I know some of the concern uh, was about the property to the west of Lot One, and mm -hmm. the concern I think was. You know, on paper and technically, it's a decrease. But is is all of the runoff going to be pushed into this ditch, which will, in practice, sort of be worse than it is now because it's now it's running off in the field, but now we're sort of funneling it all into one spot. So the the system was put at the low point, which is yeah. kind of the funnel now. Mm -hmm. um, so so the discharge point per se is the same spot. The discharge point is the same spot. Mm -hmm. And in theory, it'll be it, less. It's discharge. less volume at, at a slower rate. Yeah. Coming out into the same spot. Yeah. And Correct. it'll be less because of the infiltration. Correct. Yeah. I, I, and again, at the 10 year storm, it's 92% less volume. At the one inch storm and, the, and one year storm, um, it's it's fully infiltrated. There is no runoff. Appreciate the explanation. And I assume similar on the east side there, lot five and seven heading down. Again, there's in the past there's been concerns about erosion in that stream. And so, mm -hmm. so so on those systems, because the soils don't allow it, there's no infiltration. It's a, it's a, it's a slow down of runoff, not a decrease in volume. Okay. Mm -hmm. On the on the stormwater plan, the I don't have it in front of the that plan open. So it's the east side of the building on lot two, on sitting up on the knoll. Mm -hmm. The drainage swell loops back around, so it's picking up runoff that would otherwise go east, and it's routing it all the way around to the stormwater system. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the what, what was the thinking on that design? So that all of the runoff from the the impervious has to go to the system, so that it was that's our conveyance to get the runoff. From developed the areas to the management. infiltration basin, yeah. And does that point of interest for SN01? Does that? I didn't see anything in the plans that showed what that catchment was. I um, is it inclusive of all the development on on lot one? Yeah, so it includes all and the essentially all the land there, not just the developed portion. Correct. Yeah, um, the the portion on lot one, lot two, and and a portion of Hillview Road we're also picking up. Okay. Thank you. Well, I have for now. Any other thoughts from the board? No. Okay, I'll open it up to the public. Yes, sir. Hey, um, Mark Fossil. First of all, thank you guys for those those kind of questions about the runoff. Uh, addressing some of the concerns I had and have had since day one. Um, didn't have a chance to talk with the, the gentleman and Bob uh, and the uh, before this meeting. And uh, some of the concerns that I had hadn't been clearly addressed up until. Conversation I had one of them was certainly the runoff um, from the road and driveways coming down, going into a culvert, and then from the drawings it's hard to tell, but it looks like that that pond, uh, the, the retention pond was collecting water, and it's overflow would also then be dumped out to roadside ditch. That roadside ditch then catching up to my roadside ditch. Which isn't really the municipal ditch because then it dumps in my yard. And these guys were kind enough to explain to me that that's not the case. Okay? They're not running a connecting roadside ditch to my uh, 
spoil underneath my driveway. So that's actually going to be going in the reverse direction. They're going to spoil it. So that was coming off of the road and coming down from the driveways for the most part. They're going to go into, again, a, a, a swale along the road, but then curve into the retention pond as opposed to the opposite direction, which had not been made clear to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to read the lines and, you know, with uh, a very confusing, complicated language that goes into engineering. And, I didn't want to understand everything they tell me, but I'm taking it for the word. Um, and so my specific concerns about the, the discharge from S1 have been subsidence. So I'm going to take a little bit better time. I appreciate your time. and. Uh, just want to get get a word in so that I can stay a standing member and uh, it's a continuing um, escapade. I appreciate that, Mark. Thank nice. you. Anybody else from the public? Yes, sir. Uh, hi, I'm David Kalk. I live by teaching one two of your road, which is directly across the street from the property. On which side? On the south side. So it's you know, oh, our okay. property runs pretty much the length of it. Right. <laughs> Come closer to the microphone so, or just um, move over to the other side of the room. If you wouldn't mind either just take sitting in this chair here. Um, so you could get a mic. I can kind of cheek this over. Okay. Aaron, can you hear him better now? Hello. Can you hear me? Hello? Aaron? That's better. Thank you. Aaron, did that get picked up or you want him to repeat that? <laughs> It would be good if you could repeat it. Thank you. So my name is David Kalk. I live at 2212 Hillview Road uh, on the Budding Land Corner. Uh, our property is across Hillview Road from uh, the proposed development. Um, and so I have a question um, and some observations, but a question about the stormwater runoff that was going the other direction, the east um, on, on that portion of the property. So, um, as I understand it, there will be um, essentially an infiltration pond quite adjacent to what we will. Um, and that um, if there is a discharge from that, it will go down into the into a, a ditch, which is right in the and which runs to the stream um, by, and it will empty out just downstream from. The culvert that goes into the town road. Um, just an observation about the state of that ditch. I want to bring that to your attention. It's a small ditch. Um, I've measured it. It is its narrowest point is only about three feet wide, um, and quite a lot of it is about four feet wide. And it is very shallow. It is at the moment uh, in some places six to seven inches below. The the, the 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 town the town road. It's full of sediment. It's been full of sediment for years. It just comes off of the town road. Um, uh, the clouds driving in there and whatnot. So it's pretty full. Of, there's not much volume that can go through this thing. Um, there's a museum hole in the center of the ditch, not on the bank, in the ditch. Um, and there, by you know, through the mouth of it. There um, are trees which the town has just cut down in the last couple of weeks, but all the roots and stumps remain there. So there are lots of barriers to flow. Um, and that ditch abuts on an embankment, which so basically there's three or four feet between the road and this embankment. So um, there's not much space there. So the, the, the two concerns about this is one is that it will flow over. Onto the town road, unless um, you know, an effort is made to really change that ditch. Um, and so I'm um, concerned about that and whether the town is going to assume responsibility for that going forward or not. Um, also, at the point at which this ditch dumped into the stream is a point just below the culvert that I mentioned. And it is at that point that the slope of that stream, the speed of the water, 
and the volume of water going downstream really begins to pick up. And there are two properties downstream from that, uh, neighbors, that are already experiencing significant erosion problems uh, on their bank, uh, on the south side, um, and we got them in trying to protect their properties. Um, so I want, you know, I want you all just to be aware of it and take it into consideration. Um, the other observation I want to make, I want to just raise a question briefly about the issue related to lot one and two and the, uh, and the site uh, along the road and how far you can see. Um, and then uh, the Howard Thorman's report that uh, the distance that can be seen from the, the proposed entrance here is below. Um, the legal requirement. And I heard a comment uh, in the last meeting that, well, by cutting down trees, that problem could be solved. But I want to be aware of that. The point of those driveways is downhill from, from the Crestwood. The, 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 there's a slope there which heads from uh, the proposed lot one up toward my house, and the road is not straight, it curves. And what impedes the line of sight is the slope of the hill and the curve of the hill. And it's hard for me to imagine how any amount of tree clearing would solve the, the problem of those, that, that basic physical barrier. Are you talking about the, light, the, the line of sight from? From the road, or from, I'm not sure where so you're. The, I, I may not have the right language, but the chief, the town. I can pull up that. I can pull that and mail up. Hang on a minute. That that should be which was like the turning out of the Goslin sight line. See cars. Hang on a second, guys. I just need to share it first, so David can see it. Thank you. You you got it, David. Yep. Thanks, Scott. Thanks. Uh, so it's in the second paragraph. Yeah. And you did have this at last, I believe, at, right. last, at last meeting. I just showed it. It wasn't with an uh, application packet ahead of time because I got it after it was already posted. So cars moving west from Hillview Road towards Lot 1 have to go through an area where they go uphill and around a, a general curve and then come up and down. Um, and the line of sight there um, is, is limited. From Hillview Road. From, from the proposed from the proposed driveway, driveway of, the, of how one or okay, two. So you're concerned about the people pulling out of that driveway. That's right. Not being, and, and does that violate the required Line of sight distance. The minimum. That's what God says. That's what God says. Yeah. Okay. okay. And what I want to point out is the reason is it's the slope and, and the curve. And not the trees. Not the trees. Okay. All right. I'll get it. Does the applicant have a response for that? We all went over that. Yes. So a plan was provided showing sight distances um, with no tree clearing or any, any, um, changes the sight distance of uh what's the sight distance here 175 feet can be provided and with tree clearing of of 900 square feet, 900 square feet a sight distance of 250 feet can be provided unimpeded by the bank um and uh, the vtran sight distance allows an advanced warning sign if the um uh Site distance for the speed of the road cannot be um, provided. So we would like to propose only 900 square feet of tree clearing to maintain the the treed hillside, um, and and um, ask that an advance if we install an advance warning sign that would satisfy. So um, you're proposing an advance warning sign. Mm -hmm. So the site distance would then be um, 250 feet. No grading uh, of the hillside is, is required at that distance. And that's following the, the VTRANS site distance calculation. And what's your response to 
his comments about that drainage ditch? Yeah, so that's gravel gravel wetland one. Um, the the utility pole that was mentioned is is uphill um, and farther west of where we're outletting. We have a a culvert, um, an outlet coming from a structure inside the system that's outletting the runoff closer to the stream mentioned um, in an, in an area where the ditch already gains step. Um, Closer to that utility pole, further up the road, the ditch would be too small to handle handle the runoff. So we've provided uh, slope stabilization and a longer run uh, culvert to bring the the runoff closer to the the stream, the ultimate discharge point. Sorry, but the, the pole I'm talking about is not uphill from the ditch; it's in the ditch, and it is not west of. Uh, it is east of your. Um, your ponds and between that and the culvert that goes in the town road, and it's back in the middle of the ditch. Right. So, yes. So, so the the pole is east of of the pond. It's in line with the pond. The the culvert going out of out of the the system brings the runoff farther east and doesn't outlet directly adjacent to the the pond in the in the roadside ditch. Okay. Thanks. Thank you for your comment. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Any other comments? But if there are folks, I fled the first last time, so if there are other folks who want to see, I have to go to my the audience. Okay. Nobody else in the room? Anybody out there in the public? We asked them to raise their hand. Yeah. Yeah. If Judy. Sorry. Um, yeah. Hi. So I have. Um, a quick question about the traffic study. So um, the revisited study that you guys did um, was based on the Huntington Road traffic. Is, is am I correct in understanding that? The, you were asked to do a I think the percentage increase was based on the Huntington Road study. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, but there's no stipulations about the addition of those seven houses and the traffic um, exiting those bad exits on either side of Hillview. You know, those are, um, if you exit to the south, the Huntington Road, it's coming down on a curve. It's very hard to see. And when you exit to the north, people coming down Huntington Road again are traveling at high speed. There's no risk um, factored into the traffic study that kind of traffic accident risk. Okay. Just wondering. Um, and my other quick question is all the questions people have asked over time on this issue, are, are there answers anywhere or is this just stuff the DRB takes into consideration? I think we take it a lot into consideration, Judy, but I think the applicant has been Responding to the question so far. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else waving a hand out there? And for those of you who don't know, if you go down to the uh, um, the there's three three dots that says more. You can go to recognize hand gestures. You can click that, and that gives you the option to Does raise your hand. I'm gonna have any response on her questions or her comment on the. Uh, you see the three dots. Huntington Road. So the the traffic study does show the the peak hour trips from the proposed development onto Hillview Road, uh, which is a decrease impact from what was originally proposed the nine lots. So that that was the revision that we now show us a smaller impact on Hillview Road. The the reference to Huntington Road is uh, was showing a. Um, minimal increase from 2021 to 2023 traffic to answer the, the previous comment about when the traffic count was was taken. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Um, Fran Thomas here, I can't figure out how to raise my hand. Okay, we recognize you, Fran. Okay, um, I have several uh, questions. Um, first, um, the existing old farmhouse, 
Is that considered part of the remaining lot? And does that now mean that there are two houses possible on the remaining land? That, that would be question one. Uh, question two is I'd like to understand a little bit more about the driveway to uh, lot three. It's kind of an existing driveway that um, right now they're not supposed to be using and it goes through the wetland. And um, I certainly observed a, a lot of life there uh, earlier in the spring. And so um, what is the plan for that that will such that um, it does not um, affect the wetland? Um, is that plan to be improved and um, thus would um, affect the surrounding area? So those are the two uh, questions for now. Okay, so first question had to do with the old farmhouse. What's your response to that? The farmhouse, it's an abandoned farmhouse. It's going to remain abandoned. It won't be lived in. Um, and then it's going to be going to remain there, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then the lot three drive is a is a skim and top dress with no additional wetland impacts. And what does that mean? So the the top layer, which is you can see wheel tracks now. It was a gravel drive, but has been grown in with grass in the center. Um, and on the shoulders, that's going to be skimmed off and new stone is going to be placed. And, and the driveway won't be in the wetlands? Correct. It's an existing impact. So no new impacts will... Oh, will... so it still goes through the wetlands? It does, yeah. And they've permitted that? Yes. Um, can I, could I ask um, what's to prevent um, future owners of that driveway from wanting to upgrade that uh, driveway, pave it in the future um, as they use it more and it gets worn. What what is um, what would prevent them from upgrading the driveway? And then um, the other question on the abandoned farmhouse: um, What happens if um, a year or two down the road, I see there are now two dumpsters there. Um, the Avondas um, decide they want to rehab that. How does that work into the plan? They'd have to come back to us if they want to make that into a usable structure. Otherwise, they're in violation of their permit. And um, you have any covenants, or are you going to have any covenants to deal with um, any upgrades like Fran is uh, questioning on the driveway? So the driveway again, can also be answered the same way that, that you just answered on the, the abandoned house. They have a permit that they're going to have to live within the condition that they want to have any upgrade that kind of propose any new impacts I to the wetlands. Don't know they that we need, go. so if someone paves a gravel driveway, do they need to come to you for a permit? No. Um, it would depend on kind of what it is. So what you would need right there, right? If it's going through a wetland, right? They would need to, whoever owns the property, right? Would have the to state get, would get involved. They would have right. to get a wetland right. permit before you could change that. That, that would if, be a violation. If you were going to provide additional impact to the wetland, if they weren't going to provide, if they were going to stay within the permitted impacts, then they wouldn't need to go back right. for, for an amendment. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, like it would have to be, would the paving trigger that or not? I don't know. That's not really... Yeah in my wheelhouse and as far as like the abandoned by dealing with the state on wetlands they'd get upset about that it, it would be a means and method if they could properly um, remove the the gravel that's there without impacting the wetlands and then provide new gravel for the base and pave it all staying within the existing impacts with nothing spilling over they can do it but it'd have to be well thought out and 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 probably some sort of construction plan if they wanted but, to if but they couldn't they'd change the they couldn't change the width could change the layout or, or the where it runs the course and they couldn't change the width not without right. going back for an for additional permanent amendment. right does does that um is that in their deed when they buy it is there something in their deed that will sort of give them that kind of guidance no it's it's wetland rules friend of which very few people know, but. Correct. If they were to do anything, they'd be in violation. And it would be state matter at that point. Yeah. I mean, in this case, there's an additional, this, this permit's gonna be recorded. So there's, right. 
they're going to have more notice than someone and that you're doesn't. You're going to say it's subject to right. its wetlands permit, right? Any other questions? Is that a hand up, Ryan? Um, oh, hang on a second. No, that's no, I don't see. Oh, that Sorry, that's my <laughs> yellow hands are the one that the white hands are just still. Up. Yeah, Fran, I'm just going to okay, perfect. Do it anyway, you anyways. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Uh, I can so Bradley Holtz about Hillary Road. So I did submit written comments. They uh, yes, and they we've read those. Okay, thank you. And I have some additional comments based on the new material since since then. Uh, okay. Uh, first of all, I do want to make a quick comment on the issue that was just raised about the, the driveway. And I did I did write this in my original comments, um, but I want to remind the board that the wetlands permit, as applied for by the applicant, shows that driveway to remain with no improvement whatsoever. Um, that's what was approved by wetlands, and they're now proposing to improve that driveway, effectively widen it from its no no additional impacts. Mm -hmm. So no improvements that's going to widen the road or provide additional impact or fill into the wetland area. The so general maintenance of the driveway, which could be improving the dressing, is all grandfathered within the, the existing yeah. permanent. If impacts. you look at the existing conditions plan, present the wetlands and the existing conditions plan presented as if they're different. So they're they present a different plan. So they can so um they're allowed to maintain the driveway, continue to um provide new dressing and keep it maintained as long as they don't go outside of those impacts but it's, so regardless of what we submitted with the plan we're submitting the existing impact so they're there that's part of the wetland permit application of the entire site so that existing impact was shown on that application that was submitted yeah. so they're allowed to maintain that so this this plan that we show now with some improvements is within that permitted sure. impact sure so What's permitted was a 10 or 10 and a half below the five ground. That's what the wetland permit was for. And what you're trying to do now, now is widen it. So I, I don't want to do anything about this, but I, I, I only have this in my original comment. So before I would like to review this, yes. then I want to go, 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 go forward now. Uh, so I've heard a significant amount of debate uh, with the board around the question of um, required master development plan right. or if what the applicant has submitted should be interpreted as a master development plan. Uh, just last week, uh, the landowner removed the stand of pine trees to make room for the flower farm, according to what they, they told Tyler. Uh, this work took place across at least three days and appeared to be substantial based on the volume of smoke generated. Um, development related to agriculture is still development and needs to be represented on the master plan. And the, the farm business plan for Hillview Flower Farm describes a picture on the farm stand. Now, there's a sign installed along Hillview Road uh, for Hillview Flower Farm. Visitors will need to drive on a driveway to Reach the hill, reach the flower farm. Uh, we need to park in the parking lot to visit the flower farm. And the plans before the board currently do not describe these clearly contemplated additional development activities. Uh, so therefore, you cannot reasonably interpret this as a as a master plan. Um, to be clear, my concern is not with the. That's law. your opinion, though. That's my opinion. Yes, it's my opinion. I help you with your other opinion, but it's my opinion. Yes. Uh, to be clear, my my concern is not really with the flower farm. It's really with ensuring a comprehensive review. And the disclosure of all all development plans, you know, then uh, piecemeal development. So, you know, we, earlier I heard the comments about combining lots one and two driveways um, and uh, clearing the trees along Hillary Road to improve site distance. Um, clearing those trees takes away a significant amount of screening along the road, and, and ultimately, I don't believe it solves the sightline problem. So, the lot one site distance document uh, only shows bringing the driveway up to the minimum stopping site distance of 250 feet. But not the minimum intersection site distance of 390 feet specified in the BFAN's 1971 driveway standard for a 35 mile power road. And BTRANS also states that if an unsafe condition cannot be mitigated, it may be necessary to die, die access for the specific use. Now, the developer, from what I've heard, has proposed a sign as a mitigating measure. I'm not sure who arbitrates that, um, but I would argue that an un unsafe condition in this case um, would not be reasonable through this. Since they can't reach the 390 foot spec uh, specification. Um, also, not certain, uh, uh, David, to comment on this a little bit as well, but I can go into more specifics on this. But the um, uh, topography affords the site distance of 250 feet. Uh, if you look at the lot one site distance document, even if you take all those trees and vegetation down, uh, the elevation diagram shows a point at which the 250 foot site line, that line of site, only clears the upward sloping hillside by what appears to be less than 18 inches. So it's just barely, it's barely clearing that. 
that, that's an amount that certainly could be within the margin of error for the available topographic data. So only until after we stay streams will we not be sure if they can actually achieve that. That's like, um, moving on to traffic and the traffic study memo made, from May 4th. Uh, the methodology behind that, behind the 28% per year traffic growth since 2021 is questionable. Uh, well, the 2021 to 2022 growth was 0.8%. The previous year's growth was 7%. And their methodology assumes that this growth was already realized at the time of the May 2021 traffic study. Furthermore, this one data point of 2022 traffic count growth from free trans is merely an estimate, and there is actually no data yet available for 2023. Um, so I would argue the board should not accept this memo from the fourth of an updated traffic study. Uh, the methodology presented in this memo does not address the underlying question of COVID related reduction in traffic at the time of, of the VHB traffic study. Um, the study no, from May 4th, also the traffic study number from May 4th also states that they used a single family detached housing land use code. They estimated trips generated by seven new single family detached houses. However, the applicant's plans show an additional apartment on the proposed lot seven. That's not accounted for in this, in this update. Um, additionally, zoning regulations allow for lots within the AR district to be used for two family residential buildings. There's nothing that prevents these lots from being utilized for two family residences and generating twice as much as many trips as estimated. Um, this is a critical point. Of yeah, but the, their application, I don't mean to interrupt you, but their application is a single family dwellings. Sure, but nothing. Anything else would have to come back to the board. I don't, I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not an expert on zoning, but I don't know if that's true because it's perfectly allowed. They could just it's allowed, but they're they're representing to us okay. single family residents. So any, if a permit was, was written, it would say single family residences. Okay. My understanding is they could apply for it. They could go to Tyler and apply for a zoning permit for dual family and they'd be allowed that when there's only but I, I could be wrong about that i but. think they'd have to come back to us deviate from our site plan so they'd have to come back okay, okay. Um, <laughs> um so also none of this accounts for the vehicle prevents would be generated by visitors from water farms to your own business uh that's part of the development of this land uh so i also want to comment on the um uh, new addition that, that tyler are going to be aware of uh, this afternoon the uh, april 12th email from Terry Purcell of the stormwater program. Um, this email was only was from a month ago, but um, I understand that you just found it now. I, that's understandable, but that I've only had access to that for the past three hours, so I haven't had a chance to consult with our attorney on that on that email. Um, so I'd really appreciate an opportunity to uh, respond after discussing that, that, that email with our attorney. Um, since this was an issue, an issue that he had originally brought up. Um, however, I do have a couple of quick comments on that now. Um, in an email that Tyler uh, in email to me, Tyler stated that the town has no jurisdiction over the location of stormwater infrastructure. Um, but the notion of the town having no jurisdiction over the location of stormwater infrastructure is misguided, not supported by the email from Terry. Um, in fact, Terry's email says, quote, the permit does not obviate the necessity of obtaining other applicable permits and approvals as may be required by law, uh, including lo local permits and approvals related to setbacks. Uh, finally, I'd like to respectfully ask the board for more time for our stormwater expert to review the 25 year storm bombing document uh, that was made available to the public about a month ago, uh, as well as the uh, new stormwater runoff summary made available just last Friday. So uh, that's all I have this evening. But thank you. Thank, thank you. Any other comments from the public? Any other questions from the board? No. Anything else from the applicant? Yeah, the only thing I want to um, mention that we didn't in our summary initially with the, uh, the five comments from the board was we did send our surveyor out there to do the site distance measurement based on the, what, what the trans standards. About? So the site distance from oh, lot one lot highway. One. So we went out and surveyed it according to the standards to, to measure that. So that's a, a surveyed number. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Would the board, does the board feel they have enough information? Does the board want more information? Does the board want to continue going to the deliberative session and discuss it? Uh, I think we have enough information. I'm moving to the deliberative session. Um, you want, you want to close, close the hearing? Then? I do. Okay. Is so that... the motion in front of us is to close the hearing and go into the del deliberative session. Um, Second. Thank you. What would the board like to do? All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
Okay, so we're closing the hearing right now and uh, we'll discuss this. We have 45 days to make a decision. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Appreciate you all.